Salvete discipuli. Um, today we are going to learn lesson 32 in Latin for Americans. This is the perfect passive system. Um, this is the last of the verbs that you have to learn for the year. So um, at the end of this video, you will have learned um, all six tenses of, of the active and passive verbs in the indicative. That's so exciting. Um, it's a complete set now. I love it. Um, so a couple things about the perfect passive system, an introductory slide. Um, just remind us about the perfect system. Um, that refers to the perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect tenses. Don't forget that the perfect system, active or passive, um, forms the same way for all conjugations. This is why we love perfects, right? Because you don't have to learn different rules depending on the, t on the different conjugations. All of them form the same way. <clears throat> As a, a little point of reminder, a little point of review, um, the perfect active uh, system is formed by getting the perfect active stems and then adding the endings for each of the tenses. So the perfect endings, the blue perfect endings, the future perfect endings. The perfect passive is similar in, in so much as it, as, it, as it forms the same way for all the conjugations. Different in that the perfect passive indicative for the um, perfect, blue perfect, and future perfect is two words, okay? The first word is the fourth principal part with the ending changed to be the same gender and number as the subject. So if the subject of the sentence is femini, that is um, feminine plural, and so the ending on the fourth principal part would have to be ae, okay? So for our example verb, amo, amari, amawi, amatum, um, that would mean the ending on that fourth principal part would be amatai, okay? The second word um, is a form of the verb to be. What that means is that if it's perfect passive indicative, it's a present conjugation of the verb to be. Pluperfect, the second word, is the imperfect conjugation of essay. And um, future perfect passive indicative is the future conjugation of the verb to be. So once you know how to form it, you then now have to know how to translate it. The perfect passive, pluperfect passive, future perfect passive, is going to be similar to their active counterparts. Um, so if the perfect active, and we're going to use the verb to love here as our example, if the perfect active translates um, I loved, right, the passive is I was loved. If the active is I have loved, the passive is I have been loved. Same with the pluperfect. If the pluperfect active is I had loved, the pluperfect passive is I have I had been loved. Okay? And future perfect active, I will have been loved. Um, excuse me. The future perfect active, I will have loved. Future perfect passive, I will have been loved. Okay? All right. And I give you three different paradigm verbs. The first one, amo, amare, amawi, amatus, um, are, shows us that our first word, fourth principal part, amatus, um, if the subject is singular, you have to figure out if it's a singular masculine, feminine, or neuter, right? So it's amatus sum, if the I was loved is referring to a masculine I. Amatusum, if it's a feminine um, who, female who was loved. So amatasum or amatasum, I was loved. Um, amatas a um s. Amatas a um est. So he was loved. Amatas est. Amata est. She was loved. Amatum lo est. It was loved. Now, in the plural, obviously, you need to have the plural nominative masculine, feminine, or neuter ending. So amati, amatai, amata, sumus, they were loved. Amati, amatai, amata, estus, uh, y'all were loved. Amati, amai, amatai, amata, sunt, uh, they were loved. Okay? <coughs> now, the only difference between the perfect passive and the pluperfect passive, the first principal part stays the same. The only difference is that the second word changes. So instead of sum s s, we have aram aras arat. So amatas aram, I had been loved. Amata aras, you had been loved. Amatum arat, um, it had been loved. 
okay? Amatiaramis, they have been loved. Amatiaratis, you have been loved. Amatiarant, they have been loved, okay? And then again, future passive, we still have our fourth principal part, right? That stays the same. Um, but then the conjugation of the verb to be, the second word changes to the future. So amatis aro, I will have been loved. Amata aris, you will have been loved. Amatum arit, it will have been loved. Um, amati arimis, they will have been loved. Amati aritis, y'all will have been loved. Amata arant, they will have been loved. Okay? Now, I go through and show you the same thing. For two more paradigm verbs, ago, agra, egi, octus, again, it's so important to learn the fourth principal parts of all these verbs because, of course, if you don't know that octus is the fourth principal part, principal part of ago, you might try looking up octo as a verb, but that's not a verb, okay? This is the um, perfect passive octosome, I was done, um, of the first principal part, ago. And so you should take a minute, push pause, and write down these forms. Be sure to write them down. I will check tomorrow. And then, of course, audio, audire, audiwi, auditus, um, audita sum, I was heard. Audita aram, I had been heard. Um, audita aro, I will have been heard. Okay? All right, this last slide, I want you to write down these six forms, and I want you to give um, it a shot. See if you can translate redactus arit, demissi arant, amissi am, estus, remotum est, lecta aram, and tracti arimus. Come in tomorrow having tried to translate these um, six forms, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Good night.